Hey guys, welcome back to Orms TV. So today we're coming to you from the beautiful Cedarburg at Mount Cedar. And last night we had the luxury of going on a, a full-on astrophotography masterclass with someone really cool, Carl Gage. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Can you just start off by telling us how you got into the industry? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me on this TV and thanks for coming out last night for, I think we got back at like 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Um, a little bit how I got into industry, well, that's interesting. Um, I suppose landscape photography is not something you, you study or, or do that via that career path. It's something that kind of finds you um, in what you're doing. And a lot of landscape photographers I know eh, had a previous job before and then ended up doing landscape photography. But um, it just happened that all the steps aligned to what I wanted to do. And I started making some money in this field and it just grew step by step and I left my job. And now I do this full time, spend, stay out in the dark in the cold till 2 a.m. and take photos of the stars and different landscapes and hike up mountains and I just love it. So we're going to get straight into it and, and you're going to talk us through putting together an astrophotography trip. I realize astrophotography is 90% about planning. Start at the beginning when you are planning your trip, just walk us through the beginning of the process and what considerations go into that. Yeah, so there are a lot of things that um, I'd say primarily I would start with, I would see maybe an image on social media or, or someone sends me a photo of someone else's work and, and I get an idea of a shot I want to do. Um, example, I wanted to do earlier last year, I wanted to take photos of the Milky Way over the aloes in the Klang Karoo. I thought that was quite unique to South Africa and something I haven't seen a lot of. And then you start planning, you start looking on Google Maps in the areas, you start finding clumps of aloe trees from, from the, the Google Maps images, and then you start contacting the farmers in the area and seeing if they're willing to let you come on. And then you've got to go out there in the day and scout the areas and find the compositions and use apps like Photopills and, and Planet to see where the Milky Way is aligned. And once you've planned all of that and the positioning, then you come back and only take the photo. So yeah, it's definitely 90% planning. And then when you go take the photo is the 10% of the enjoyment of it, I suppose. And then just uh, bigger picture planning trips in terms of uh, there's lots of light pollution everywhere. Very few people have actually seen the Milky Way in real life. Yes, so, yes. Uh, light pollution, time of the month, time of the year, those sort of things come into account as well. Yeah, definitely. And I think once you start doing this um, quite consistently, you kind of learn which areas are the best areas to go um, to and where the light pollution is via trial and error uh, most of the time. And then you learn what time of the years are best for certain shots. I think last night we saw the Milky Way moved throughout the night into different locations for different compositions that we had planned. So you start to get a good feel and a good practice on how to do that. But light pollution, massive problem always want to go to an area where it's it's dark yeah okay so you've planned out your trip now uh, what's going into your gear bag what are you packing uh, let's take this trip for example you're shooting in the Cedarburg at the end of July so just walk us through everything that you pack from your photographic gear to just everything else you need for a, a midnight mission yeah so from a photographic point of view I'd say my bag is probably a lot smaller than my landscape bag because um, you generally would only use one lens for most of your astrophotography so I use a 14 to 24 mil and you saw last night we shoot pretty wide because you want to try and get some decent foreground in and then as much of that Milky Way core as you can in your photo so I already have my primary body with my wide angle lens on and then a good solid tripod sometimes I'll have a second body with another lens that I will then run uh, for time lapses in a different area and then a lot of your other stuff for prepping is you need a lot of batteries with the cold your batteries die quickly um, you need headlamps different lights for light painting a lot of jackets um, water snacks and then all your like hiking gear that you would go and shoot okay so all your gear is packed and you're on your way to location can you just walk us through the scouting process and uh, how you look for compositions during the day yeah, so the first thing I think about are, are what are the shots I want to do. For example, do I want to do just purely Milky Way core? Do I want to see the foreground? So you think about then, do I need a light paint the foreground? Or do I need to take a long exposure for the foreground to see that detail? 
Do I want to shoot a star trail? So where south does my composition complement south? So you think about all these things and the nice thing with like the photo pulls app it is, is it has the augmented reality feature so you can hold the app up and point it in the direction you want to shoot go to the time you want to shoot and it'll show you roughly where the milky way will be positioned um, and then once you plan that shot then you start to then look at the timings of when that's going to happen and then you can plan out your compositions for the evening and you move from one location to the next location so a lot of planning goes into it it takes a lot of time and skill to get used to how to plan like that but you can see last night was a lot of fun as we moved throughout the locations absolutely and and as you say each location sort of presents a different opportunity to to compose the image to grab different movements of the stars so we shot the stars in quite a few different ways last night can you just talk us through some of the techniques you use for for astrophotography yeah, so you saw last night when we started, we were shooting these reflections in a, in a rock pool that we found. And for that, to see the detail in the rocks and all of that, we had to do a long exposure for the foreground. We did uh, between two and four minutes at a lower ISO, and that was to see all that detail in those rocks and get that reflection of the Milky Way. And then we would shoot a second shot for the Milky Way itself um, that we would then blend in in post. So knowing the techniques you can do and, and how proficient you are at editing and post-processing really affects the way you will shoot if for example you don't have any skills with blending photos then you would prefer light painting and use a torch to light paint the foreground to see that same detail so there are definitely different approaches to see the foreground or get different shots depending on your skill base on editing okay cool and then if you can just give us a few Obviously, each photo is different, and the settings are going to be different depending on your conditions. But just a, a few sort of basic rules of thumb when shooting Astro. So you need to look up the rule of 500. That is a really good marker. And what that does is it tells you how long you can expose for before you start to get star shift. So roughly, if you're shooting with a 14 or 15 mil lens, you can shoot for 30 seconds. But once you start shooting with like a 20 mil, 24 mil, you limit it to about 15 seconds. Aperture always as low as possible, whether you're shooting with a 2.8 lens or a f4 lens, always as low as you can go. And then ISO, you're probably starting in the range of, I would say, about 3200 to 6400. With other forms of photography, you generally have quite a good idea of what your final image is going to look like on the back of the LCD. But... I noticed last night with Astro, you, you are looking at a black screen, essentially. So uh, how do you go about making sure that you are getting that, that perfect shot? Yeah, so a lot of guys that do landscape photography, then struggle when they come into Astro because they want to light the whole scene and see everything. And that's not possible for, for many reasons. You could be shooting with other people and then you can't be turning your lights on all the time or your scene is just so big and grand that you can't light the entire scene to compose. So there's a lot of blind shooting. So you'll basically shoot a photo and then see what it looks like and what your composition is and then adjust and move slightly to the left or right or up and down and then take another shot. So you, there's a lot of blind composing. So it takes a lot longer to actually get a final photo out because you're doing a lot of this blind shooting and trial and error shooting, um, which is quite different to other forms of photography. And just, so we were out from about five o'clock in the evening to two o'clock in the morning on a traditional trip that sort of length how many final images are you looking at i don't know if i've just gotten more stricter with what i'm putting out or <laughs> compared to before but if i can go and do a shoot and i get one to two really good images then i'm very happy even just one good image it's, it's worth it for me to go out but i would try and shoot at least five different compositions at least in the evening so it's five photos five six photos you're getting in a whole evening of shooting it's not a lot it's it's quite different to as, as we said to other styles of photography however those photos you want to make sure are really good so you're going to spend an hour hour to two hours just getting one photo right getting the light right getting your angle right your composition right so yeah you saw yes last night it was a lot of shooting and then a lot of stuff we're not going to use and chuck out. It's quite cool. It, it almost takes you back to the old school sense of photography where you rather want to make sure your handful of images are amazing mm -hmm. as opposed to just shooting as many as possible and picking a couple good ones. 
Yeah, I suppose that's quite a good analogy. I never actually thought about it like that. But it is. You, you're definitely working towards just getting that one. And you see it in the hour, we only take like five, six photos because it's the long exposures and we're setting up the lights or we're adjusting things. So. so now that you've got your shot, it looks amazing in the back of your camera. Can you just walk us a little bit through the, the, the editing process? Yeah, I think a lot of people get intimidated by editing astrophotography images because they put off, um, it's, it's quite different from what they're used to shooting landscapes and that where they're comfortable. But there's so many good YouTube tutorials and tutorials by uh, different guys. I, I've got some stuff out there where we show you how to edit, show you what's the ways to bring the pop the stars out and all the colors and everything. So I don't think you should be as intimidated by the post-processing um, as previously. There's, there's just so many good guys out there with good tutorials that you can follow and that. And also a lot of the noise reduction software today is just so good that you can shoot with the lens that you currently have, like an F4 lens, and get really good astro images. So there's no need to go and buy expensive equipment unless this is something that you're passionate about. So just any advice that you have for people who are interested in astrophotography, either as a hobby or as a professional career? Yeah, so the hardest thing I would say for astrophotography is learning how to do it. I think it's a lot more practical based photography. You can't just watch a YouTube video and now and then go and shoot astrophotography. So the best thing would be to do is to get on a workshop. A lot of guys do astro workshops. I do astro workshops. Um, you learn a lot in a, in a very short period of time. We teach you all the settings, how to focus manually, how to compose, all the techniques that we've chatted about today. And it's a great way to learn how to do it so that when you do go out on your own to a great location, you've got the skills in the bag to shoot the photos. So you've obviously gone on a countless number of astrophotography expeditions in your career now. What are some of the things that someone might not think about but actually are really important to these trips? Yeah, there are quite a few things that I, I've seen over the years and working with other people that um, are quite essential. I'd say the, the most important thing is a solid tripod a tripod that's really steady when you're working in the dark and you've got to be changing the angle of your camera and that you don't want a tripod that's easily knocked over or has got a lot of movement in it so good tripod and with that an L bracket uh, you do shoot a lot of portrait shots um, when doing the Milky Way so you're getting the foreground and the sky in so an L bracket also a must Warm jacket, warm clothes, good snacks. Make sure you have really good snacks. Um, when you're out there, you get the munchies all the time. And then, yeah, go with someone who's also passionate. If you don't go with someone who's passionate and they want to go home at like 9 p.m., it's your motivation. It, it becomes depleted and then you also want to go home. So if you're out there with someone who's also passionate, you stay out there much later, you get a lot more photos. So try and go out with someone you enjoy shooting with. Carl, I know... I certainly learned a lot last night. It, it was a proper masterclass uh, and amazing. And I'm sure our viewers are going to appreciate some of the advice and tips and tricks that you, you've given us. So, yeah, I mean, thank you very much for, for coming out and sharing your time with us. No, it was great. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed the zero degree temperatures and <laughs> out in the cold and walking through the muddy marshes. But oh, it was great. It makes it all that more worth it, yeah? Perfect.